Yes, Jets fans wanted to bury Mike LaFour six feet deep in that first half in Green Bay. And listen, basically it was confusing imperfection with terrible play calling. The, the OC is always enemy number one. We know this. Remember Paul Hackett back in the early 2000s? He wasn't great, but he also understood Pennington's limitations with his arms. He was very smart in a lot of ways. In this game with LaFleur, I don't, they were fine, the offense. You know, I said at halftime, it was 3-3. They were running for 5.3 yards per clip. They only had 24 plays in that first half. Sometimes as an OC, you can't unload all your ammo in the first half. And sometimes you have to look forward and set certain things up for that second half. And that's especially the case when you're trying to protect your young quarterback. Notice not a lot of five to seven step drops in this game. Uh, it's the reason Elijah Moore's not getting a lot of action recently. There's a lot of one read plays, which makes sense. And when the momentum of the game is defensive and it's a low scoring game, sometimes you got to roll with that, knowing that you could, you could burst out in the second half. The Brees Hall touchdown, where he cut it up, that wasn't just an isolated play, folks. Here it is late in the second quarter, second down. Watch this play. Similar play, underneath handoff, outside, underneath counter, basically works like a sweep in a lot of ways. Um, someone's going to call it a trap. Someone's going to call it a counter. Whatever it is, you got the two pulling blockers. Brees Hall takes it underneath, and LaFleur is really setting up Green Bay's defense to worry about its edge. So you got the tight end, Conklin. I think that's Conklin. Yeah, Zoom, Zoom is here, Conklin. And then you got Lakin Tomlinson coming on the pull. Uh, Herbig gets pushed back a little bit, which screws things up. Here's the key guy for Green Bay. Uh, left edge. Let's see how they handle it. AVT, right to the second level. Uzama, is he trying to crack? Cracking on the... Uh, I mean, going right to the second level. Edge is going to be left alone for the first, first puller. He's got to get around. Tomlinson, he gets around as best he can. Hall has to bounce it outside a little bit, and he's still got Conklin leading him. Doesn't really get much. Great open field tackle. With that, that open field tackle from the DB, excellent job. It's going to be a bigger play. But the design of the play is to get Green Bay thinking east-west. Attack the edge, make that edge vulnerable, thinking that they're going to come east-west. Michael Carter is the decoy on the pitch. Let's see if anyone else goes left on the line. No, they just block down. Corey Davis blocks to the play side. So, yeah, that, that play design was great with the two halfback look. Uh, a lot of people call it pony, whatever. Two halfback look. And uh, this is actually 22 personnel because it's two tight ends. But... Notice how the floor sets this play up. Now, here it is. The big touchdown, the Lambo leap, the only one of the day. Green Bay loves to do this too deep, off on the back end. That's why they're not great against the run, because they're DC stubborn in this regard. So we got two halfbacks, and it's 21 personnel with two halfbacks. Tight end and a flex look on the line. Barrios just came in motion. Garrett Wilson, tight split. Let's run it through. Same concept. It gets blown up because of the blitzing safety and Brees Hall. That's just talent. That's his vision. And there he goes into the Lambo leap. But let's bring it back to the line and see why it's so effective. Pretty much not the same exact formation that Green Bay saw in the first half. But when you see a halfback in this spot, in this wing spot, you're going to be on high alert. It's this, especially on first down, which it is. It's first and ten. Here is the safety. I think it's a safety. Oh, it might be a slot corner, but it's a DB who's going to be blitzing, and he blows it up. The design here is the first play, decoy to the running back this way. Hall coming underneath, underneath handoff, and it's pretty much a sweep, attacking the edge, the way they're blocking. But Hall has a option to pitch it on Garrett Wilson for the reverse. So it would basically be a receiver reverse, with the halfback involved. But because of this blitzing DB, it gets blown up. But notice LaFleur's scheme. The first play in the second quarter sets up this play. You fake it going this way, you have Hull coming this way. No option to pitch on the first play. The second play that sets it up, 
there's an option to pitch to get it going against the grain. And that is what LaFleur does a lot that people don't see. He sets up plays, second half plays, which, which with first half looks. Here, instead of tight end and guard, it's going to be GT pulling down on the left side with uh, Lakin and Dwayne Brown. There's the pull, and at this point, Herbig's in trouble. Herbig's in trouble with this blitz. You're not expecting it, so all you could do is try to push it to the outside, yet you know Garrett Wilson's an option. But at this point, you got to forget about the pitch and just push your guy push your guy deep. Let's see what he does. I mean, I guess that's what he's going to try to do, but the, the safety's too quick. AVT trying to lead the way. It's all blown up. It's, it's a play that really doesn't work, but Brees Hall just makes it work with his talent. And LaFleur makes it work in getting Green Bay's defense to think east-west. Think edge, think outside. And by doing that, notice the flow of Green Bay. Some guys are going this way, some guys are going this way. And because of that flow, because of that hammering of the edge, east-west, I mean, look at this D-end right here. The D-end chases. Chases to the strong side. Chases, chases. He is in no man's land. He, I mean, this edge, he probably does this because he knows he has a safety on the edge. So he's being replaced and he's allowed to crash down. But the awareness of him crashing down to this level just is absurd. And then you got this linebacker here, uh, this weak side linebacker who reads it pretty well. But the problem is, let's see what he's reading. He's reading the guards. He sees the pullers. The problem is he just overruns it. He overplays it. And in a normal spot, you'd be fine, but your interior is completely out of the mix. And that's because of LaFleur's edge pressure principles. He hammered that in the first half. And because of that, the C opened, Brees Hall saw it, and that vision of Brees Hall, knowing that it could be there, you know, tip of the cap to the floor for making this happen. You know, NFL jet sweep. It started with the Wildcat, then into read option with Kaepernick, RG3. Now jet sweep is a staple, and this is a major weapon. Credit to the floor and Brees Hall. Oh.